Hi everyone, it's Susan from SusanWinter.net. Thanks for coming to my channel again today. Thank you so much. Thank you for subscribing. And if you haven't, please do so now. Love, love, love to see that. It really does show me that I'm going in the right direction and that I'm giving you the kind of information that you find of value. So I'm really excited about uh, the question that I have today that I want to answer because it's about partner selection and uh, does it not affect all of us? how you know that 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 dilemma between the person that's good for us and safe but we're not quite attracted and then the one that's just oof, you know sexually attractive to us that getting that thing right so thank you paul for writing this i think this is brilliant so let me read this to you guys because i love this one so much okay so paul writes he goes hello susan for most of my life, I've been struggling to choose the right partner for me. Yeah, you and everybody else, Paul. Okay, good. This is great. Thank you. Um, there's usually this dilemma for me to choose either a man to whom I'm sexually attracted but have very little in common with or a man I feel deeply connected to but doesn't ignite my sexual desire, which I guess is kind of an upgraded version of a friend. How should one proceed in this context? Thanks. This is one of those million dollar questions because we all walk that tightrope between the person who's good for us and stable and consistent enough to be a great match and the one who just excites us and the one that we feel ourselves pulled toward. And if we've had enough experience with that kind of sexual chemistry, we normally know that we're going down a dead end that's going to like this at the end. And if you're ready to pay the price and you don't mind doing it, do it. But chances are very good that you've noticed, Paul and everybody else, that those hot, unbelievably exciting moments, they're good for the ride. These are not people for the long run, okay? I used to um, have, this is kind of a sideways example, but let me use it. I used to tell gals to not condemn the guy that comes over, walks all the way across the room in the bar and comes over and kind of fumbles with, you know, trying to talk to them and can he buy them a drink? And please don't shut that guy down because it took him so much courage. And the fact that he's so nervous shows you that this is really, really big for him. You don't want the guy that's so slick. He's done it a thousand times. When you're slick, it means that's all you do. So the people that are hot, people that are that immediate sexual attraction, they're good at that thing, right? You utilize them for that thing, okay? It's like the difference between a hammer and a screwdriver. They have different functions. So when you see that and you feel that, know that that's for that ride. And please, don't try to switch the rides. You can't do it. If you go on the one that goes, ooh, 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 don't expect it's going to be the one where you're just kind of coasting along and looking at the scenery. It's an entirely different ride. Now, to answer your question, how do you find the excitement and fuse the two together? You've got to find enough that is compelling in this partner to want to be romantic, physical with them, okay? So a friend, an upgraded version of a friend, that's not a bad starting point, but you haven't quite added the right spice to it. So what I'm saying is that ideally, the best partner for a relationship, for stability, for longevity, for contentment and happiness, is one that is a very, very sexy version of your best friend. So, I think what you've got, Paul, and most of us have, are these two wild extremes. We've got this one over here that is just, we feel, just feel it all going through, it, you know, or we're getting goosebumps just thinking about them. And then this one that, like, yeah, really nice, did I, did I? So they're two separate from each other. You need to find something a little bit more in the middle. It has a little bit of excitement, but you also feel calm and you feel secure feel good about yourself. That is the perfect partner. What you're noticing is extremes. We are looking to put these two in a blender. That's the mix, okay? The people who are 
boring to us are actually the ones who are good for us, but we are accustomed to being attracted to the flash. We can't help it, okay? It does get our attention. But remember, there is a time and a place for each type of thing that you're attracted to. Nobody's saying anybody's wrong. There's a time and a place where the quick, intense ride is exactly what the doctor ordered. There's a time and a place where you're like, you know, I really want something permanent. I want something as wonderfully able to go into the future as possible. I want a real partner. I want to feel content. I want to know that I've got somebody who's got my back as I have his or hers. So in that case, you would pick an attractive, interesting version of your friends. Okay, I hope that helps. And they do exist. The first way to make yourself notice them is to think about what I've just stated. This does indeed exist in reality. And if you haven't seen it yet, I'd like you to get an idea of what that would be like in your mind and ask the universe to show you. Say, hey, show me what a sexy best friend would look like and how I'd feel when I'm with them. And even if they're not mine, show me in other people's relationships so I can know that they exist. Because once you know that it's possible, you can bring it into your life. And thank you so much, everybody who's been calling me on Magnify. I do dearly, dearly love that on-demand system. If you haven't tried it, take a look at the description below. Uh, thank you all of you who've subscribed. Thank you for your comments. And thank you those of you who come to my website and actually book one of the pre ordered, you know, the 45 minute sessions. It's great to know that I'll be talking to you during the week. And if you happen to notice this little white lump behind me, this is a sleeping puppy that has been quiet the whole time. Baby Nika was with us. Thank you everyone and wishing you great love and contentment with excitement. Bye-bye now.